Disclaimer, the information that is contained within these recordings is for information and educational purposes only. This information is not intended as medical or nutritional advice, and neither the lecturer, author, or owners of the website that host this presentation can be held accountable for the use or misuse of the information contained in this presentation. I want to thank you all for attending tonight's call. I know how valuable your time is. And so I put extra effort in ensuring that this evening will be of considerable value to your lives. Tonight I will be open, transparent, and clear to the best of my abilities. I play this game of change and transformation at 100% in the hopes that I can impact the lives of others in a positive way. I'd like to start off tonight's call by sharing with you one of the most powerful technologies that are available to all of us today. This new technology is so powerful that it will allow each of you to work more efficiently, connect with more people on a more meaningful level, get more done in less time. So you can spend your time doing what you want, resting, spending time with loved ones, whatever you wish. This new technology that I'm going to introduce you tonight is much like the computer and the internet when it came into existence. When we can use these two technologies, the computer and internet, and we leverage it, it allows us freedom we never imagined possible before. So what is this new technology that I'm referring to? I am referring to foods free of larvicide, fungicide, herbicide, genetically modified, hormonally altered, pus filled, blood filled, chalk filled, and free from harmful add additives, preservatives, and substances that make us crave the food and frankly don't have our best interest in mind. I am talking about clean, whole, natural, unprocessed foods. Now you may th be thinking to yourself right now, well, how is clean, whole, unprocessed foods a new technology? Well, it fits the very definition of a new technology, and that is an, a, a technology allows us to leverage our time and our energy and to get a larger output, to get more done in less time. And feeding your body whole natural foods certainly fits that description. Now, before we move forward here, I want to describe that every new technology and every new idea moves forward in these three stages. The first stage is total disbelief. The second stage is usually vehemently opposed to the new technology or, or, or idea, and sometimes it involves some violence. And finally, stage three, total acceptance as though it had always existed. I want to give you an example of this. <clears throat> an example is when bottled water first came out. When it came out, people were in stage one. They were in total disbelief of it. I mean, why should I pay for water? It's like paying for air, right? I mean, why do that? I can get free water out of here. Who's trying to? Who's kind of throwing some shenanigans at me right now by trying to make me pay for water? And stage two. A lot of parties were vehemently opposed to bottled water. They were claiming that the bottled water companies were, were not telling us the truth about our actual water, that there really was no uh, toxins or anything harmful in our water that's provided for us from the city and that comes into our homes. So anyways, this went back and forth, and they even had people protesting that the bottled water would create more plastic, which would fill our line, our, our, our garbage, uh, and leave more footprints for us. Finally today, bottled water is in full-fledged stage three. That is, it is in total acceptance, as though it always existed. Today, we filter out the toxins in our water, and it is a common practice to do by everybody as though it always existed. After all, who would drink tap water or who would go to a restaurant and dare drink the tap water? You order bottled water. Well, someday I predict that food will be the same way. As the awareness is raised, people are going to become more and more aware 
of the foods. And they're going to go through stage one and stage two, which we're somewhere in between there right now. And we're going to move to stage three where, yeah, absolutely, I, I get clean, whole, organic food that doesn't have a whole lot of chemicals and stuff in it and additives. And I think we're moving more and more in that direction. As we go through this presentation tonight, I'd like you to take note of some of the ideas that I share with you. What stage are you in? Are you in disbelief? Do you vehemently oppose it? And just make note of that. Okay. There is no question that there is an obesity epidemic. Let me correct that. It's not an epidemic. It actually qualifies as a pandemic in our country, as well as some other westernized countries. One simply cannot avoid this problem. It is everywhere around us. When you pick up your kids at school, you can see it in the kids. When you go to the mall, when you go out to eat, everywhere you go, people are getting larger and larger. If we look at the slide that's up from the CDC, that's the Center of Disease and Control, we see that over the past 20 years, there has been a dramatic increase in obesity in the United States. If we look in the upper left-hand corner in 1990, we see that you know there was a f the majority of states were 10% or less obese. Nothing really alarming right there, but starting to raise some awareness. And then if we go over to the right, just nine years later, in 1999, all states have become over 10% obesity, where most are between 20 and 24%. So we've just almost doubled the amount of obesity and overweight in just nine years. That's a pandemic. In 2008, in the center slide there, just nine years later, two-thirds of the states are greater than 25% obesity, and six states are at 30% obesity. Now, these are alarming rates, but what's even more alarming is a study that came out by John Hopkins University Medical School combined with University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and we're talking about two of the best medical schools in the world okay they put together some statistics here and what they came up with is that by the year 2030 86% of all U.S. adults will be grossly overweight or obese. Now I ask you this very simple question, but it's a valid question. If the Center of Disease and Control and John Hopkins Medical School and the University of Pennsylvania Medical School reported that by the year 2030 that 80% of all adults would be infected with the swine flu, what do you think the reaction would be? Think about that for a moment. Do you think it would be in the media? Do you think the president maybe would be addressing it? Why then are we not addressing the obesity and overweight issue and all of the preventable health benefits that go along with it? And by the way, the U.S. is number one in preventable health-related diseases like diabetes, and heart disease. Well, it's not the purpose of this call tonight to really go into that, but I would like to share with you my very short opinion on this. You see, the two largest advertisers of all major media outlets are pharmaceutical and food companies. Now, the swine flu pandemic would get the media coverage, in my opinion, because the pharmaceutical companies would stand to gain billions. It is estimated that just this year alone, which it is 2009 in the time of this recording, that the pharmaceutical companies will profit.